All right, thank you for joining us today. Um, today we're going to be talking about some advanced um, sharing features in Zoom. Um, as you can see, Sitar and I are masked up today because we are um, recording from our office today in a shared space. So with our current um, mandates in our state, that is one of our requirements. So we'll be doing our video today um, with our uh, PPE on today. So hopefully everything still sounds okay and whatnot, but we're going to be going through and we're going to be talking about some Zoom advanced sharing features. All right. And so the agenda for today, we're going to go over live transcription, PowerPoint as a virtual background, sharing a portion of your screen, and then also sharing music or computer sound only. So the first thing we're going to touch on is live transcription. So this is cool because you can have um, closed captioning going while you're doing a Zoom meeting. So to do this, Zoom is going to create closed, cap closed captioning, um, which shows on the bottom of the screen. You can change the font size of this closed captioning as well. What you want to do is you want to make sure to enable this. You want to go into your Zoom account. So go to zoom.us, go to your settings, and then turn on closed captioning. And then when you turn that toggle on, make sure that you check the box that says enable live transcription service. So this is going to enable it where it will transcribe live for you. And then when you're in your meeting, you're gonna at the bottom where your Zoom tools are, you're going to click on the button that says live transcript. And then you're gonna get this little pop-up window and then you're going to want to choose the button that says enable auto transcription. And then you will have live closed captioning as you are doing your Zoom meeting. And so this is great for students. This is great for English learners. This is great for students that might be hard of hearing. They can have that closed captioning option for them. So they can turn it on, or excuse me, when you turn it on, they will see it on their end as well. Now we're going to like kind of switch gears and talk about advanced sharing settings. When you click the share screen on the bottom of your Zoom, you always go to that basic sharing screen that shows your screen one, screen two, and all the other windows you have open. At the very top, if you actually click on advanced, you're going to see some different features. You'll see PowerPoint as virtual background, portion of screen, and music or computer sound only. So we're going to go into what these three advanced sharing settings are and what they look like in Zoom. So the first one we're going to talk about is PowerPoint as a virtual background. So what you can do with this when you enable this and you share this advanced feature is you can, if you have a PowerPoint presentation, it'll make that your virtual background. So you can click through your presentation and your students will see you in front of your presentation. You can also go through and you can move yourself around in the presentation. So if there are certain points that you want to highlight in your presentation, you can do that as well. It is in beta right now, so it might be a little buggy, but um, it is kind of a cool feature that you can have. One little downside is that it doesn't currently work on a Chromebook, meaning that if your students are on a Chromebook, they're not going to be able to see your virtual background. Um, if you created presentations in Google Slides, you can download those as a PowerPoint and use them, but it just won't show on a Chromebook screen. So we wanted to show you, this is kind of an example of what this would look like. So this is a presentation as the virtual background. So Tara is moving herself around, showing different fossils and you can enlarge yourself and whatnot. So it's, it's kind of a cool little advanced feature of ways that you can kind of share content in Zoom. Next to that, there's a part within the advanced sharing that is called portion of screen. So what is that? That means that this actually allows you as the teacher to share just a specific part of your screen and it's going to show up inside this green box. Now in order to make this show up, if you click on your advanced settings within your screen share and you do not see the option to share a portion of your screen, you're going to want to log into your account at zoom.us, click on your settings, and you're going to want to scroll down to your in meeting basic and there's going to be a setting called disable desktop and screen share for users. You're going to want to make sure that that is off so it should be toggled to gray 
And the reason why is because if you don't see it, then you, if that is turned off, then you'll be able to share a portion of your screen. If it's turned on, then you won't see that button. So what this actually looks like is when you are sharing your screen, you can pick a specific spot to kind of highlight for the students. So how it works is once you click it in the image on the right, there's that green box that's showing. So the students are only seeing where they turn in their work in Google Classroom. They're not seeing the rest of your screen. So this is really great, especially with the Chromebooks, because remember the Chromebook screen size is really quite small. So the students see a more zoomed in picture. So the words and images will appear bigger because they're just seeing that little section that you want. And you can move that green box all around your screen. You can make it bigger. And most of you have dual monitors. So you can just drag that box from one screen to the other and you can share anything that you'd like. So when we're looking at the teacher view versus the student view, on the left hand side, that's the teacher view. So you'll see where the green box is. And then on the right hand side, that's what it looks like from the student Chromebook view. So instead of them seeing the entire thing, they're just seeing what's inside that green box. And since they're on their Chromebook, it's really nice to be able to focus on one area because they'll also see that image and those texts a lot bigger. So this is, um, like Sitara was saying, to make sure that you um, are able to see some of these advanced features, you want to make sure that that disable desktop slash screen share for users, you want to make sure that that is turned off. So in this example, I have that setting turned on. And when I go to share my screen, these are the options that I'm given. So I'm not able to see screen one, screen two, screen three. I can only see application windows. So I can only see Google Chrome. I can only see my Outlook. I can only see my Zoom window. When I toggle over to advanced, I only get PowerPoint as a virtual background, music or computer sound only, and content for my second camera, which is my dot camera. Those are the only options that I see. Now, when I have that setting turned off, now I have all these other options to choose from. I have screen one, screen two, screen three. I have my whiteboard feature. I have, if I had my iPhone or iPad connected and I have my application windows. When I toggle over to advanced, I still have virtual, I still have PowerPoint as a virtual background. Now I have that portion of a screen option. And then I have music or computer sound only and content for my second camera. So you wanna make sure that that setting is turned off so you have as many options as possible to you when you are sharing your screen with your students. So now let's talk about that next sharing feature where it says sharing music or computer sound only. You will want to choose this option when you're sharing your screen if you only want to share the sound and not your actual screen itself. So this won't change what the students see at all. It will only affect what they hear. This is amazing for listening comprehension for practicing for the SBAC, or you could use this to stream music while the students are working, or you could even use this feature to have students listen to podcasts. But this feature is really, really great to work on that listening comprehension. So those are just some of the features that we wanted to share with you, some advanced sharing features within Zoom. We thank you guys for taking some time and um, spending some time with us. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. We hope you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you later.